I'm Sam Kim. I'm Diana Kim. I'm Rio Park. And I'm Bradley Darren. Their stories on today's Jet Force. The producers of DIS TV's Jetstream bring you a brand new program featuring in depth investigative journalism on today's pressing issues. This is the Jet Force, where we dig deep and fly high in order to deliver the real stories that matter most. Our first segment affects not only students at DIS, but people all over the world. Diana Kim brings you this piece on the importance of breakfast. Hello DIS, I'm Diana Kim. Today, we'll be investigating the importance of having breakfast and the negative consequences of skipping this important meal. Here are some clips of some students at DIS who are suffering during class time due to lack of energy. Sleeping during class. Eating sugary snacks. Not doing well in PE class. Stomach growling in class. C's, D's, and even F's. Seem familiar? All of these are the negative consequences you will get if you don't have any breakfast. Studies have proven that people who skip breakfast have lower energy levels as well as less strength and endurance to engage in physical activities. Also, if you don't eat breakfast, you will have worse moods during the day. That's not all. Skipping breakfast influences you to have poorer memory. They're more likely to become overweight and face a higher risk for serious health problems such as type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease. These are the reasons why we must regularly have breakfast. Starting your morning with breakfast will boost your metabolism. A morning meal keeps your blood sugar levels stable during the day. Moreover, having breakfast will help you feel fuller for a longer period of time and eat fewer calories throughout the day, which will control your weight. Studies have also shown that people who eat breakfast consume more vitamins, minerals, and fiber throughout the day. A morning meal is a necessary fuel not only for your body, but also for the brain as well. Eating a healthy breakfast helps you improve your concentration and productivity throughout the day. So don't forget to have breakfast. If you or your parents have difficulty waking up in the morning to cook, start a conversation with them now. Here's some food for thought. Cook your breakfast at 8 in the evening the night before. I'm Diana Kim, reporting for Jet Force. While living in Korea, you've probably noticed a lot of businesses come and go. A few weeks after you found your favorite store, a totally new shop opens up in its place. Sayin Kim has a report on the newest fad popping up everywhere, the claw machine. I'm Sayin Kim, reporting for the Jet Force, and today we'll be looking at the secrets of the claw. The claw is our master. The claw machines are classical carnival games, which people insert cash into a machine to try to win a prize with the claw. These claw machines stores have been popping up everywhere in Korea. These seem to be the one of the most popular activities for people, but is the reward worth the cost? While the game seems simple enough, there are several things that may inhibit your chances at winning a prize. The first problem is how the claw is designed to pick up the toy. When the player presses the button to go straight, the claw veers to the left. This is meant to mess with the claw prongs and picking up the toy. Also, once the player has a toy and the prongs, it moves fast and hits the wall and tries to knock the toy out of the claw. As well as trying to make it as hard as possible to win prizes, the claw machine's businesses only get paid in cash which leaves open the loophole that the businesses can dodge paying their fair share of taxes under reporting income. But with this new evidence that has shown the machines are rigged, why are people still playing? According to KBS News, an addictive player said that it made her feel like she's going back to kindergarten. People use this to relieve stress whether it is a student who just failed a test or a father who had a hard day at work, every age and gender enjoys using claw machines. This industry has grown from 500 stores nationwide in the fall to over 1,400 stores in only three months' time. But there are some serious risks besides the way the machine tries to scan the player. Experts say that excessive obsession would lead to serious addiction and crime in the shops. I think the claw machine is a total waste of money. It's a scam. There's no way that people win the prizes in this. Yeah, the, uh, the machine is rigged. The claw doesn't pick anything up. 
it is just a complete waste of time and money. It's uh, the toys aren't even worth anything. I mean, if you're skinny enough, you probably could stick your arm in or something and grab a grab a toy. But otherwise, I don't know. I like claw machine games because they help me get rid of my stress. They are very fun. Every time I play the game, I get a rush, even if I don't win. That is what makes me keep playing. And when I do win, the rush is great, and I just feel so happy. I don't care about how much money I spend here. It's a fun place that I can go and relax and have fun and be away from my studies. The effects of video games have been debated by psychologists, sociologists, and the media for decades. Some claim that Korea is the home to the global gaming industry. Addiction plays a key role in its popularity, and addiction can lead to empty wallets. Reno Park has more. The gaming industry has been significantly increasing in the last few years. Huge platforms such as Steam have been creating games daily. Video games have now become a professional sport, known as esports. In 2017, there are world-famous titles such as Overwatch, League of Legends, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. There are currently 60 million users active daily. We talked to a few gamers that wanted to keep their identities secret. I play League of Legends the most. Uh, currently, I play Overwatch, but before then, I used to play Mix and Counter-Strike. Games are money by encouraging the users to spend on in-game items. The average gamer spends approximately $700 a year. I spend about $100 on League of Legends and I spend about $50 on other games. I spend about $1,000 on this game. Gamers felt glory when they spent the money, but regret it later since the game will lose popularity in the next few years. It seems gamers spend money on impulse and later experience buyer's remorse. Yes, I do regret spending a thousand dollar on this game because I have lost interest in this game now and I'm not playing it anymore. No, I don't regret because to earn something you have to give up something. So in my case, I gave up my money and earned happiness. League of Legends sells skins for a limited time, which later on I can boast to other players. It may seem bizarre to spend that kind of money on games if you don't play them yourselves. About 50% to 75% of discount, and that's when I spend my money on it. And so, I decided to put myself in their situation, and see how games encourage people to spend money. After 3 hours of gaming, I spent $30 including the PC bank fee. People shouldn't play games if they don't have income or if they have addiction problems. The video game industry is currently designing the most cutting-edge entertainment to date. However, addiction is the new dark side. Watch your wallets, gamers. I'm Bradley Darren. We'll be back soon with another edition of Jet Force.